A few years ago, I had the opportunity of working with a 17-year-old youngster who was a very remarkable person. He did not have any problems, not that I could find, but that wasn't what he came to me for. His parents were worth many millions of dollars. They had come from Europe, and this 17-year-old boy was going to inherit a multi-million dollar conglomerate when he was 19 years old. They had worked out the legality of this so that he could have this empire when he was 19 years old. And because of the difference of age and the difference of culture, these people had come from Europe, they were in their late 60s, they wanted me to talk with their son and make sure that he was prepared for this tremendous financial responsibility. Since he was 15 years of age, he had been working in one of the divisions of the company. But his father had gotten him in under a different last name because he didn't want anyone in the business to know who this kid was. And other than pulling strings to get him in in the first place, that was all the father did for him. And so he went into this company, hired with a different last name, so no one knew his connection with the owner of this conglomerate. He started working full-time during the summer when he was 15, and then when he went to school, he just worked part-time. But by the time he saw me, he was well, about 17 and a half years old, and he had risen from scrubbing floors to one of the buyers of stock and equipment and supplies in one of the divisions of the company, 17 years old. Tremendous responsibility that he had. One day he came into my office with a look of chagrin and he sat down and he said, did I get my tail blistered today? Well, what happened? Well, he said, through some neglect on my part, I ordered several thousand dollars worth of the wrong supplies and we had to send them back. It involved a lot of book work and it was a loss to the company. And my boss was furious. And when he found out what I had done, he really let me have it. And he concluded with, he says, kid, if that ever happens again, he says, out. Now, he didn't know who he was talking to. And I was quite interested to see how he would handle this. I said, why didn't you tell him who you were? No, he said, I didn't want to. That would be a terrible thing to do to my father. Well, uh, you know, in a couple of years when you take over the business, you're going to fire him, aren't you? No. No. He says, I want someone like that on my team. He said, anyone that's that industrious, that's that concerned with the well-being of this business, he says, I want him around. Well, I said, w what if he fires you? And I remember he got a big grin on his face. Not an arrogant grin, but a very self-assured grin. And he says, oh, he says, I'm not really worried about that. He says, after all, my father does own the business. Now that's security. He knew who he was. He didn't have to prove himself. He didn't have to spout his credentials. He had that quiet assurance of a sense of identity, a sense of individuality, knowing who he is. And that was enough. You see, you really have to be somebody to be humble. The reason Christ did not have to always push for his rights is that he knew who he was. He didn't have to prove himself. The text that I think is relevant to what I'm saying tonight is from 1 John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath that he has bestowed upon us, this love that we should be called sons of God. Other translations bring out different interesting variations. Stand in awe, marvel, 
that this person, God, would so lavish you with his love that he would call you his children. Do you really know who you are? Do you really know how much worth you do have? You're somebody. You're worthwhile. This is your father's world, and you are a son or a daughter of the king. To know this fact, this fact that is anchored in reality that transcends any kind of disruptive experience you can go through, is one of the most solid pieces of information that can ever be communicated to mankind. You're somebody. Because there is this objective evidence that you are a child of the King.